plate rich plasma and shockwave. And now the last portion we're going to talk about is very exciting. It's called amniotic membrane therapy. And this is kind of a really unique science, and I'd like both of you to contribute to this one, uh, starting with Dr. Feldman. What is this amniotic therapy? It am makes me think of a baby being born in the placenta, so tell, tell me about it a little bit more. Yeah, we, we alluded to this earlier with the platelet-rich plasma. Um, so amniotic cells are cells taken from um, a placenta or the amniotic uh, tissue, not the embryo, so not the baby. Um, it is typically taken from mothers, um, healthy mothers uh, with healthy pregnancies, uh, patients that are screened, and there are several companies out there that, that uh, take the amniotic membrane and embryonic tissue from the, uh, right from the hospital. Mm -hmm. They uh, then take that and they, they are able to um, sterilize it in a, in a special bath. It, but it, it just it, from what I remember from biology, inside there, isn't that sterile already inside the, um, the placenta? Yeah, but you still want to... Still want to sterilize it. <laughs> it's coming so from another body. There, there are the communicable diseases within yeah. there, mm -hmm. but only certain communicable diseases can be passed from mother to baby or, yeah. or um, in, in that situation. So if you take pure amniotic tissue from somebody and put it into yourself, mm -hmm. there could be rejection. There could be host versus graft rejection. Um, what the amniotic allograft is, so allograft refers to taken from somebody else. If it was from you, um, um, it wouldn't be from you, but uh, you know, stem cells could be taken from you. So that would be called. Yeah, so let's talk about comparing this to stem cell if you want okay, to. Okay, yeah, so too. stem cells uh, would, would be, so there are cells that can become anything, right? You're, you have bone marrow that produces cells. So inside the bone marrow are stem cells and they could, you know, if you extract some stem cells and you could then inject them into your own tissues, they could become bone, tendon, ligament, fascia, okay. um, nerve. Uh, and, and this is really exciting part of, of, of the future and the present really, but it takes a bone biopsy to extract the, to extract uh, the, stem, cells. the stem cells. And um, and what you're looking for is you're looking to convert diseased and unhealthy tissue into healthy tissue that can do the job that you need it to do. Uh, so the amniotic tissue allograft is a way to take the elements that come from stem cells okay. and it's acellular. So basically when they get the amniotic tissue, they wash it down and sterilize it and then they pretty much break apart the cells. So there are not, se there are not se any cells in this uh, allograft. And um, so therefore there is no graft, there is no chance of disease transmission, it's extremely safe. And then you're putting at a very high concentration of, um, of, of the materials that come out of the stem cells, you're putting it right at the source of the injury. And as we mentioned, um, and which we'll show you in a second under the, uh, the ultrasound guidance, uh, you can put it right at the source of, of the defect. Yeah, um, so you can. So we'll show you an ultrasound right now of, of uh, uh, what it looks like, where the needle is going in, and then putting a little bit of that liquid in there. Yeah, so this is an Achilles tendon that's um, that's uh, thickened and diseased. You see uh, some measurements here. You'll see um, some uh, dark areas on on either side of the uh, of the picture. This is an ultrasound looking at a cross section of the uh, of the tendon, and um, and this next picture shows the needle coming in. And then lastly, we'll, we'll transition uh, to uh, some, you can see the actual crystal in uh, blue and yellow um, um, coming out of the tip of the needle into the darker areas of the tendon. And the, and the tendon really shouldn't have any dark spots in it. It should be a pretty uniform um, color on that gray scale that you see. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we see on the ultrasounds. Yeah, and so it's great, so you can put it right where it needs to go. You it's, don't have to guess. And as you'll notice, it's a really small amount. And, and here's a big difference between the, the amniotic allograft and the PRP. And we were talking about getting three cc's of, of the liquid gold <laughs> from mm -hmm. the, the PRP, we'll call it that. Um, and uh, the amniotic tissue is expensive. It's, it's expensive because of, I mean, just think about how they, they get it and uh, a, how they process it. And um, we carry a couple different varieties in our office. We, we kind of call it low potency and high potency. So one is a, um, a crystal uh, form and the other is a liquid form. And we have to, um, um, we usually mix it with some anesthetic or some saline to dilute it a little bit, but at most we're really getting about maybe one cc, maybe a cc and a half That's at not the much. most. It's not much so, much. so if you have a very small area uh, to, 
to um, infiltrate, perfect. You know, if you have one little defect, perfect. But if you have a larger area, um, you could either do the PRP or you could mix the, the two together. There's, there's nothing that says you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you wanted the best of all worlds, and this is what we do, I mean, if you want the best of all worlds, you do it all. Um, you know, I, I call it throwing the kitchen sink at the problem. If, if, if you want to get better, you can throw everything it's, at it. Because there's, there's, no, there's no downside to doing any of it. It's, it's not dangerous and it's not destructive. Well, I think that's what we've talked about in the office sometimes. If you're preparing for one of your triathlons or 100-mile runs and something happens to yeah. you. If I've committed a, a year you're gonna of throw my everything life, at it. and it's not just me, it's my family is, is committed to this as well because they got to put up with me. Mm -hmm. they got to put up with late, late nights, early mornings, and... And just it's it's a huge commitment, and you know I'm not going to let it derail me. Or you know I have I have grandparents that want to play with their grandkids, and they can't. Um, it's anybody. It's not just an athlete. Yeah. It's really it's people that don't want to you know be laid up for two months, three months, and there's no guarantees with surgery. Correct. Um, so you're not burning any bridges by doing these procedures, any of these procedures. There's relatively very low downside to mm -hmm. them. And there's a, no anesthesia a high risk. Upside. Right. Yeah. So these are the, the main regenerative uh, therapies. I know there are a couple other we talked about slightly, um, some of the older ones that were in vogue for a while. Any of those one you want to touch about? Um, yeah, you'll see prolotherapy is, is one of the things that's what out is, there. What is that? What are you injecting in um, there? Typically it involves dextrose or sugar. You can mm -hmm. do anesthetic or you could just do saline. Um, and it typically involves multiple needle sticks uh, and very small amounts of the, uh, of the dextrose uh, into damaged tissue, whether it's plantar fascia. It's used in a lot of other areas of the body mm -hmm. as well. Um, and um, yeah, I, I don't do it. So therefore, I don't know yeah, a whole lot about it. About it. Yeah. But there are, you know, that's one of the things that you'll see out there. And most, most of the, the um, people that will do prolotherapy are also doing um, the PRP or the well. amniotic tissue because uh, you know prolotherapy is one of the earlier ones that have come out um, and it was before the amniotic cells were were uh, available and it was when stem cells were very difficult to extract and and it's all very costly Should, yeah. you know dextrose is not very costly and, and there are places now where you can go and, and they, they will do a bone biopsy extract yeah. those cells and inject them in other places for you. Maybe that's There's next a, for us yeah, too. Yeah, and you know that's <laughs> it, it gets back. If I have a hard time with a with a needle stick, I don't know what I'm going to yeah. do with that. It, it gets a little bit back to the, what we were talking about before, though, with the the quality of your own tissues. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm uh, a little bit of the on the less healthy side, then the cells that you'd be able to get from my bone marrow may not be all that sporty, you know. So yeah. um, sometimes it's good to give it a little kick with. Um, the amniotic tissue allografts because they have mm -hmm. they have those signals that are going to get a response from your regular tissues. Th those signal both stem cells and regular cells within yeah. your body to get a response, rather than doing a trephine that's the size of a pencil into my into my uh, iliac crest right in my hip. Get something. Don't really want that myself. Yeah. So not. let's let's break it down for, for those that are listening to uh, or watching this program. The most common one diagnosis we see in the office is plantar fasciitis. So when should, should someone seek out someone that can do these regenerative therapy treatments? Is it after one month? Is it after six months? Is it day one? Who should, who should come to, to see someone that does regenerative medicine? Well, as, as Ben said, most people get better, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and most people have met somebody that's had plantar fasciitis. Oh, try this. It works. It'll work great. Um, you know, oh, I had a shot once and it, and it healed it me, it cured me. So, you know, there's, there's, symptoma, there's symptoms and there's problems. And symptoms come and go sometimes. If you're not symptomatic and it's not affecting the quality of your life, you, you don't, don't need, need it. it. Okay. You don't need it. So, you know, if you've tried the, the usual, and I'm a big foam rolling fan, um, you could do icing, you could do anti-inflammatories, you could rest. Resting is always an option. Uh, maybe not for my patients <laughs> for the most part, or I'm me. Out. But uh, you know, resting is an option. But if, the, if it's affecting the quality of your life, if you don't want cortisone, or if you've had cortisone it before, worked. and it hasn't worked, if you're uh, needle phobic, you know, maybe the, the shock wave would be better for you. Um, or if you if don't want to. If you don't want to take the time off from you don't a steroid want to, injection. Right, or the... If you're considering surgery, too. Considering if surgery. If you're saying, you know, the only option is surgery, you have to cut through the fascia or 
you know, repair your mm -hmm. Achilles, another option to maybe avoid surgery would be one mm -hmm. of these other options too. Yeah. Well, great.